Okay, everybody, so this is the demo a lot of people really want to see. I mentioned Mark, Mr. Mark Connor's name, um, and a lot of people were really interested to see his um, his demo. His demo is a little shorter. We're running right at uh, 35 minutes, a little over. Uh, it's a little shorter, but still, it's packed full of info. Uh, he does speak a little quieter, so I tried to boost the uh, volume, but you might have to uh, uh, boost your your uh volume on your phone or your computer a little more um this is going to be a beaver and otter demo he goes about things a little different than a lot of people but this man has stacked fur he's a control trapper he's trapped multiple states i actually talked with him um the night before for probably two or three hours before i realized who he was so he's a great guy answered a lot of questions um, he did do more after I cut off, but he was showing a lot of younger trappers some stuff, a lot of kids stuff, and I didn't really want to film him doing that. You know, I didn't want to get in the way. So, um, again, lots of info, great guy. Really hope you guys enjoyed the demo. Make sure to leave a comment, make sure to like it. Um, because again, just like Mr. Bobby, uh, Ferris with the Cow demo, I kind of want to show him this later on, and uh, I think it'll be cool um, to see what everybody thinks. So, y'all enjoy from Arkansas and been in Texas the last couple of years. I've been traveling since the mid 70s. That's what I've been doing for a little bit. I'll show you a couple of modifications. I don't do a whole lot, but this is a magnum trap, which I like because it'll hold them by the foot or the tail. And I like to take the old uh, dog off and put on a Bilal dog. So it'll close completely. That doesn't make any difference until you get an otter or a muskrat by the tail, and then it'll hold them. Get that little extra. I don't know. I'm about to give up the, on uh, I take the safety hook and I put it on the high side. That way, when you set it, you can drop it over here and it will fall right in there and be out of your way. And I use, just grab a link of train around, and I use an MB swivel. I don't buy cheap swivels. I just buy MB, and I put about three or four lengths of that heavy. Uh, chain on it and then I use a split ring. I don't use these on coyotes or I they use them on beaver. And then here's a little trick I use if you get an eye that won't close, that's just a cable clamp that I drop down in the hole and seal that because it will jump. It will jump. It will jump. It will jump. Now, this is my uh, I should, this is my caster mount trigger. I like it just you had your mount here. And that way there won't be any trigger hardly sticking up out of the water. I'll put it upside down and it'll just be a clear opening when you come into that mound. I can't see any good out of the time. That's an old BMI mag. The Lyle's the best, but boy, they're, they're awful high. I do use quite a few 280s. I put a longer trigger on them. And, uh, these are real good otter trap. Bring it on down a little bit. If I had a short trigger, I'd use it on the bottom. But and I've caught hundreds of beaver in 280s. People tell me they won't go in them. I tell them that's right because they'll start in it and they'll get hammered right behind the ears. <laughs> and, uh, and if I got a lot, I set a lot of these in holes. I believe in eight stands. I use eight stand on everything I can, but I'm not seeing the same setup. Pretty heavy chain, and you will get otter once in a while. You'll get a bad hit no matter what you do, so you need to be able to hold him. This is this is my favorite snare setup. This is five. Six, this has been through the war, looks like. But it's, this is five sixty four. It's one by nineteen. Big barrel swivel right behind the loop. That's about a nine inch loop, ten something. I don't measure it. Loaded the slim lock, it's got a support collar on it, and then I hook it off. And uh, when you're hooking them off, you always hook them down close to the ground because that beaver he'll chew it off up here, and that way you still have something. Or if you're in the water, be sure you tie it off under the water. And uh, on a snare, of course, you're dealing with the beaver might be this big, or he might weigh 75 or 80. So if you have some knocked down, just play with them a little bit. Might come up just a hair. Just put it dead center of the trail. If he's on dry ground, put a couple inches off the ground or three and leave it alone. And uh, I don't use a lot of 
lot of guide. I kind of like to think of it as kind of suggestions. If he's on the ground, just you know, kind of kind of guide him in that direction. And if I'm on a trail that I want to save, you can give him a long snare and give him something to wrap around back up there. Or you can drive a pole in the ground over there for him to wrap around and get off your trail. And one thing you need to remember on a snare, if he's if he's going down a levee like that, it's real slick. You need to uh, you need to hold him up on top so you won't have to deal with that beaver down high up in the briars and stuff. A snare is a really good tool. It'll take a lot, a lot of beaver that won't go near 330. When you're in the water, do you try to make them dive under or you just go half in, half out? I'm about, probably not even half. And then sometimes at home, you got to guess at what the water is going to do. So you like it? You like more being out or? Probably, maybe a little, maybe a little more under than out. Oh, and if you're going to set them on an the incline, I like to kind of keep it with them. the incline. Get the, kind of with that chair, you know, and it seems to hit them a little better, a little quicker. This 564, I like it. I've snared a lot more by the neck. On an otter, are real easy to snare, but the problem is he's going to have a catch circle. And then if you don't snare him around the neck, if you body snare him in that small cable, he's really just about him. You'll have a big cut. Just, I'd come on down about, that snare's too loaded, but about four or five inches. And I like to cant that snare when it's on the ground. You want to you catch him right here. They're pretty easy to kill if you get them around the neck. So you only make your loops out of one by 19 and then everything yeah. else is 7 yeah, by 7? Yeah, this usually got an extension. Well, the extension is 3.30 seconds. Then just clip it here. Use the that swiveler at 50, 60 cents a piece now, so now we've got to hang on to them. Here's something else I wanted to show you. Well, like this H stand. This is my otter trigger, by the way. That's 22 inches of old telephone wire. Real tough stuff. And, uh, I just put it on there and then I fold it in into a bell. And I even take and kind of fold them out one way and one way the other. You still got that hole, but you got a little a little extra on either side where that otters but they'll usually center up on that hole and you need to bring it on down pretty good for an otter because they can slip through a lot of stuff one thing i want to show you this is a kb stabilizer and it'll fit just about any any kind of bear you need to wire it onto your trap or you will lose it wired on the spring oh and by the way i I really, really believe in those safeties. That's the best one. It's sticking straight up. It's not in your way. You can see it. And I really have saved, saved a lot of trouble. But this is good in the rocks or on a, on a, uh, in a concrete culvert or something. And that's a pretty good stabilizer right there. <coughs> I don't carry these around. But this one wired to a tie plate. It's, it's there. I mean, it's... I'll just block it down. I had spots in the rocks in the riprap when Otter was high where I'd use these. Just stack a rock or two up, leave you hole, and use these. And that, that tie plate, that'll really, really hold it in place good. I want to show you, before I forget, I don't like to use stakes. I like to tie off. I use one eighth cable. One reason at home, we have a lot of bears. They steal a lot of beaver, and usually you won't get your trap and everything if you got that good cable. I cut them all 10 foot, and I can use two or three if I have to to tie them to something solid. I need a short one, I'll double it. Don't, need it. don't think it's solid, it probably is, and don't take a chance. I'm going to show you a trick on staking one. You know how bad we got the banks are so soft. Come out here with your stake, hook on to the split ring. I don't use these short stakes, I use 30. If he's pulling this way, if he hasn't got a tree to tie to, come back here and back it up with another 30. And he won't jack both of them. He can't get the, he can't get the torque to jack that one. And saving you a beaver or otter looking for him, that's a big deal. You do that with snare stew or just mainly your conibears? Whatever you gotta do, mainly it's a conibear. Or, a, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, top stake for my drowning rig, I'm sorry. Or that too, if you want to come with it. I, I stake everything really solid. Because a beaver and otter, they're really, really stout. 
So you just mainly use the re T bars, or have you moved yeah, to any of? Yeah, or you, or you know, I use a lot of disposables. They're getting pretty high too, yeah. so I use T bars. For water work, what's your favorite disposable? They don't make them anymore. It was the Stingray. The Sting, the big spade ones. Yeah. anymore either way is good good i like this when i'm in the winter in the summer i like to put them this away and you can miss a lot of turtles and some grinnel and stuff like that they'll swim under it and then you can take a you know you take a wide run drop it in there put your stick on the inside and you've got about a three foot hole covered and you're ready to run and this is a stabilizer that i made this is a 330 stabilizer that we cut in the middle and took two pieces of flat iron and uh, welded on there. It's really, really stable. This one will go in the mud and this one will stop it. It's really, 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 really stable. We spent a few dollars on them, but they're worth it. Go in there like that. It goes all the way in the bottom. I, I do like these where I can use them. So you're always using stabilizers? You never yeah. do the sticks, the whole thing with the sticks? If I can, you know, I've trapped a long time without them, but if I can, I use them. in a bunch in the Delta in Arkansas there was those counties got a bounty so anything close to the road that beaver is already wild to 330 so we use snares and we got off the road we used a lot of number three fridgers and held them alive this is actually a number three herders you have six and a half inch jaw spread up and down number four herders is the same up and down it's just a little wider but this and a number three bridger you know, the trick to it is using about four or five pounds of pan pressure where you'll catch him up. That's one time you want to catch him up high because that joint on the beaver right here is really weak. And uh, well, you started off with 10 foot. If you're right here, I'd use 10 foot. If you're getting up where you got some entanglement, 30 or 35 inches of chain is plenty. And uh, I've caught lots of them like this. And, uh, one set that I use when they start to get a little smart and of course it has to be right under his nose, but just just make a little, I, I do like to bed the trap, you know, just to get it down below the bottom just a little bit, and then just make just a little bit of a slick spot. Put one drop of sack oil on either side, and don't do anything else. And you might guide it just a little, but not much, just a little, just a little something. And that'll take a lot of beaver that won't go near 330. But make sure you use pan pressure. And I use a, actually I didn't have any trouble with laminating to catch my pie, or offset. This one's laminated in a straight jaw, and that's a good trap. But, and I use, uh, usually have three swivels on it. And I use all MB. If you're going to use smaller traps like that, is it better to laminate them or? Just, I would, not drown him if you're going to use a smaller trap. You catch him right there in that first joint, it's weak, and he'll start spinning. And that's something you don't want to talk about or do or nothing. Yeah. This is another little deal we use in culverts. This is a <coughs> this is a beam clamp. This has got a number nine wire. We drilled a hole in it, mounted the wire to it, and it. Uh, this is to tie off. You just bolt it on the side of a culvert like this. Put your snare out here just like this but it's just a beam clamp and the snare shop handled these already ready to roll. And you anchor with that too? Yeah, okay. yeah it's a set screw, it'll go down. And that old corrugated culvert, you know what I'm talking about, you get it mm -hmm. through, it ain't going anywhere. If something pulls out loose, don't go looking for it. <laughs> oh, that's good. 
I want to show you my damn brake set. I don't, I don't ground them any favor. The one set I do use, like if it's on the side of the road and there's a tall dam and you're liable to get it stowed, and you can take a lot of beaver with the dam brake set. But uh, I guess I can show it right here. And all I do to the dam is I walk up to it and I take my boot and just get it boot wide and we're gurgling, making noise because you don't want him to have a whole bone, want him to brag a big stick or something up there. Just get it gurgling, get you a little notch in it. And uh, I take this, this is the old 44 Blake and Lamb. It's just the same size as a number five bridger. This one hadn't been dyed or anything. It's got a seven and a half inch jaw spread. <coughs> I set that trap this deep or this far back from the dam break. Like this is the dam break. The trap will be that far back or it could be right here depending on the water. But the main trick to this, and this is a little different than I originally learned it, but I put that trap just slightly offset. And the main key is, and I you know, run him down the wire. The main trick to this is that beaver is gonna bulldoze come up just like a bulldozer and you're gonna bulldoze into that hole so you come back here with a couple of sticks and let them stick up about two or three inches above the trap and when it hits him when he bumps into that he'll go around and then when he comes to fix that fix that break he'll drop his back foot in that big iron trap down the wire he'll go this this worked for me everywhere I used it except where there was a lot of smart weed. But that's a real good set and it's probably back a little farther. It's harder to catch them the more level it is. And if he misses it, I have used two traps. I ain't proud. <laughs> Had a big female last year. Somebody messed with her and she wouldn't go on a snare. She quit using any trail. She cut a tree down that night. So I set five TS-85s that stuff, caught her, but she, she earned it. She and you go it. about 10 to 12 inches out away from your down break? Well, like I say, this, that far, and if it's, some of them are pretty much straight down, and if it don't matter if it's a foot and a half of water, he's still going to drop that big foot in there. And the same way up on a steep bank. I apologize, I'm moving and I've got a lot of my stuff in store here. This, this is for a number three bridger. This little spider rig a guy made me up. But what it what it does, it goes into the it goes under like this. It goes in there like this. And then you just set it straight up against the bank. Oh, I like that. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Stick it in the bank and on, on a real vertical. And, uh, and sometimes they will climb a vertical bank. I don't know why, but I've seen them just yeah. it's almost like that. Well, that's a good one. And he'll just, I think he thinks it's a step up or something. He'll just drop it right in there. Was that just two pieces of quarter inch rod bent? Yeah. Yep. You can have it. It's, it's made to go in that, you know, in the, in the by the pen on the number three bridge. They might, but it's that it just it just sticks in there, you know what I'm saying, and holds that trap. Oh, I'm building he'll, something else. He'll uh, take it with you. He'll uh, I've got a dozen. I don't use Sweet. Three. Yeah. But, uh, I have some of these next year. Here is a. Uh, I use cheap sheet. I don't want to get a lot of stuff. But... That's about two minutes worth of work with a bolt cutter and a welder. <laughs> oh, when I use a 330. Them down. You know, I put one stick right here. I'm real sticky about getting them silent, but when I'm narrowing them down, I like to. I don't like to do it straight out. I like to do it gradually. Both. I feel like it spooks him less if he's not going straight into that. You know, just straight. But and then another thing I like to do. You got to remember, you're standing up here, and that critter. His eyes are right here. Of course, I, I use a dive pole. It won't hurt just lay it on that trigger. And if I'm in a, uh, a long run, I like to use two or three dive poles. I think if you get him under the water quicker and back from the trap, he's more likely to go on through it and turn around and go back. 
And uh, also, if you're in a deep run, I like real brushy stuff. You know, you need to dive like a top or whatever. But I do like to, like I say, I like to just kind of run him in there to not, not you know, kind of wind it out. Don't, don't crowd him too much. But you don't want to like build like a fort around it. It works with a lot of them. I deal with a lot of beaver that somebody's already messed with. So yeah. I just assume. Which, you know, a lot of times I... Just go ahead and go after them yeah. right there. They use a lot of snares and stuff. But they'll still go on a conifer bear if you can find them. Like, oh, and anywhere, if you can find under a log or a side channel, and a front is everything. You can go in there and set up for the front where the current won't get you. And that high water will kill a lot of beaver for you. That when that water gets up, there's a lot of extra stuff floating and laying around. I think they, they kind of allow for stuff like that sometimes. Or you can get away from the, away from the house and set narrow spots or under a log or a side channel where they're going up to market territory where you catch a lot of them that you couldn't catch. And I stay away from the den unless I'm fur trapping. When I'm fur trapping, go in, hit the den, and run, but I don't mess with it. During control work? Yeah, I don't mess with the den unless I got to. And I Yes, you'll usually whack two or three, and then especially that old female. This time of year, she's got little, and she'll hang in that tree for two or three weeks. I've seen them do it. And, uh, they're not the same critter in the summer. Lure, I use lure if I need to pull them, and then usually about another month or so, lure just it'll lose its effectiveness as far as I'm concerned. But if you've got a big caster mount and they're already going in there, there's no use to use lure. They're already coming there after a front. And then I'll take a, a lot of times, I'll take a caster mount. If there's a better spot right here, I'll take it over here and just move it. Or if you've got a big caster mount, just kick the thing and stir it up. and uh, Or just slick it up and don't use any lure. Just slick it up, change up the appearance or whatever. So lure's going to be the last thing you usually <laughs> use unless you're fur trapping. Usually, yeah, I just... I don't think lure will catch a smart beaver hardly, but uh, sack oil will, or maybe a food lure. But the problem with a food lure, like wood chipper, if you got nutrient, they're going to be all over you. And then a cherry oil is a good change up for a beaver, but if you got any coon within a quarter of a mile, they're going to come to that cherry. But it's a good change up. And I got one oh, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, he catches a lot yeah, of I'm beaver. He'll, just, he'll walk up and he'll set up number three and he'll stick a ear of corn in the bank. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> you feel peel sticks work kind of good in the south like to do up north or is it kind of probably better in the winter yeah. a lot of times if I've got a smart beaver too like I say I'll, if he, he's already been messed with sometimes you just got to pull out for a, for a little while and then pick you a spot before you leave and then right before that front slip in there don't set a whole bunch and don't go in there shooting snakes and make a lot of wreck. I'll make you one set for it. Like where he's going up to a caster mount or he's crossing over, make you one good blind set and then get out of there and leave him alone. Because it ain't paying you to spend a month messing with that baby. You need to kill him and get out of there. But I do want to show you an otter set. Here's my. This is a. Uh, this is an old one and a half double jaw black and lamb, and I added a spring. I like a double jaw on an otter, and then of course, in our country, you've got a lot of coons, and coons is real good on coons. I'm gonna get the water for this one. This one. You'll take a real big jaw spread on an otter, but you do need real good springs and a lot of swivels. I never had much luck lure an otter. Uh, the holes are the main attraction. If you can get real good crawfish oil, that's a, it's a good uh, otter lure. But I don't know where you can actually get any good crawfish oil anymore. But I like to just uh, blind set for an otter or uh, a slick up set. I'll fix to show you. I don't know what I forgot. What do you have any questions or? Well, if your 330 is when you're purposely trying to avoid otter and only go for beaver, how do you do your triggers or how you set them? Just slide it, put it together, and slide it all the way to one side. After 10 bucks, you'll still catch it. 
guy I worked for used a lot of 85s. They had water control structures of solid concrete. They come up and stomp up the knots. We'd set TS-85 straight on the concrete and still catch fever. And today, if you've ever been taught to bet them, you can't try to get that, but it will work. They hadn't got to be vetted all the time. I like to bet it, but in that situation, it did work. And we put them on the cable because there wasn't anything to tie up. And held them alive. Lure, lures, good stuff, but you ain't got to have it. If there's a good blind set, I'll take it every time. <coughs> Any, oh, one other thing I want to mention is, is holes. I used to set every hole. I don't do that anymore. But this is a body of water over here, another body of water over here, and you've got a hole that connects them. You set it and set both ends of it. And try to set it and tie it where he'll fall back into the deep water. They don't always do it. That's what you need to try to do. Of course, any... Any double back on the creek, the otter will cut the corner. And I like to set at least two in the head or three because you've got a lot of coons and nutrient. you got to knock the beaver back first if the otter do it. If you're fur trapping, just run in there and skim off the cream and then leave unless you're trapping the otter. Then go in there and knock the beaver off and pick you out a few good spots. You have to wait on them. I waited two or three weeks on a lot of otter back when they were high. And uh, that one, if it's, I set it on top, but if I've got a short trigger or if I'm setting half in, half out, I put the trigger on the bottom. Is the way I run those. And I, I usually use this inside notch, but I've got this one filed out actually where it's about the same. And that one's on a notch because it's a little stout on it. Got him on my stand. Uh, I had about pressure. I use about five pounds on that 44 or two because I want that back foot centered when it goes off. I don't want a toe catch. Can you do use your inside notch on your 330s? Yeah, I mean, I just in my hand, yeah. That's it. Which I'm after beaver, you know. So, you know Otter would probably be better to use that light knot maybe. Or sometimes you're in current, it's whatever you gotta do, you know. Yeah. And you can take if you're in current and put you a little toothpick size stick or something inside that trigger right here too. I wouldn't be doing that if that safety wasn't on there. <laughs> stick it in here and kinda can you see that? Kind of tight. Kind of wedge it right here. Yeah. Or I have taken it, just wedge a stick down on there too on the top and hold a little more. That'd be real go ahead and go through there. I'm going to show you, show you that otter set. Probably a beaver set or two. Y'all are going to laugh at me, but that's okay. This is one of my tricks for otter. In Arkansas, we couldn't use anything animal. So I was looking for some attraction. One day I was in the dollar store, came across this glitter. So I took red and gold and silver get through the set and throw it on the bank and there's the fish scale of your track. Get out of here. Yeah, I'll show it to you. Let me show you. I'm going to turn around and go right here into the water. Really need more of a bank. I need a steak. I'm sorry. This is typical. So I didn't hear what's going on. Oh, uh, he uses an attraction, so it looks kind of like fish scales and stuff on the bank. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm hmm. It seems like Arkansas has got a whole lot of that crazy ass wool. He has slicked that bank up. It's better if you got a little more of a bank. Make your whole wood actually work like this. No pattern to it. Make three or four holes. Take your hands and stick them up. I 
I like to run two traps on this one. Set placement is not real critical here because you got them moving around. That bank slick up the bank. And I like this just a little bit farther back because I'm going to catch a tune. I want to get him by the back foot if I can. And then I'll run one this way. You can drown them. I don't ever pull with hard. Run one this way and run one that way. That trap over here. Move them up a little farther. It's not a good mix set. It's good, real good otter set. And of course, you can keep the tune out of it. Slick up the holes. If you got a little more of a bank. Put a couple up here, that way if the water comes up and down, we'll still be in business. How much water you like over your pan, over your trap? Uh, a couple of inches or five or six, whatever. Then just kind of keep working that way. Yeah. Then just kind of yeah, that goes up. Glitter. But don't, glitter. don't put just a whole lot because you don't want to attract the birds. <laughs> if the water comes up and drops back down, just slick the holes up. In, stick up the bank, and of course you want it right where they're traveling, in a crossover or off the creek or crossover, something like that. And then the, the main, the other main trick to this is you don't use bait. If you insist on using bait, you use little bitty pieces in all the holes. But you use fish oil, or crawfish oil, salmon oil, squirt it in the hole, and take your stick and get it in the mud. That way that scent will be in there and he'll have to work for it and he'll have to dance around to find it. You know, we'll give him more chance to get in the trap. Like I say, the only problem with this is coons. If you're going to set it, put you some 160s or 220s in the trail or dog crews or whatever it goes for the situation to catch those coons, keep them out of this set. They will be in it. Well, I got that and made it up good, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's like I've been to a party or something. Oh, <laughs> 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 that thing about glitter will get everywhere. Not like a double child trap, like a safe. And I, that over the, uh, the new one and a half double child oh, coil elbow. Oh, you can say it's a big trap. You can weld in double jaws pretty easy. And I have used a number three double long. That's one other reason I set it back a little bit for coon. But if you got that big a trap, you need to get him out of back to it. But you're going to catch coon. That's a real good otter set. That sack hole. Let me grab that other stand. I'll tell you one more thing. Thank you, sir. Watch the otter whenever $100 go through my trap. Not get caught. I spooked him. He run through it. I had it blocked from the top. When he come up, he was still doing good. Oh, so. He's cute, isn't he? I probably, no, I love dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's so cute. That's oh, just boy. whatever I had laying around. <laughs> I'm like a three-year-old around dogs. I can't help it. Yeah. And this is... Yeah. I try to make this work for the big thing. They can be here or whatever. That's just to keep him on the bottom and throw you a brush across it. And this is a really, really good set when the water, you know the water's going to rise. Set those deep channels. When that water falls down, you'll have some beaver and otter. Some on the dry ground too. Oh, I don't use many on dry ground. We can't use any of So what was with the hardware claw to get? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a For keeping from going to Oka. So this is, okay, okay. this is the water level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay good. This is, here we go right here. This is the water level. And it traps down deep. You just don't want him to go over the top of it. That's all that's for. I have a question. Why do you put that wire over you your trap? You keep him going over the trap. You want to keep him on the bottom. Got it. Yeah. See, that's in deep water. Make him down. I'd say the water level would be about, you know, whatever. Most of them stay on the bottom anyway, but I watched one otter go through my, and I thought I had it, so I started using it. I, I painted that, it don't seem to matter. That, kind of dull anyway, I don't, I don't find that. That'd take a lot, of, a lot, a lot of beaver knots. That's for beaver. And I set, if there's a long run, I'll set three or four in it. <coughs> 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Attached to the trap. Yeah. We don't have a wire attached to it. You find it makes a big difference with having a circle rather than just uh That's mainly for otter. You know, I just give them a hole to look at an otter. They're pretty good about missing the trigger. So that's why that's on there. That don't long big trigger. I'm about to say your safeties are off. Yeah. Yeah, it's wired. <laughs> oh, and this oh. is the way. If you're on a, and I don't carry these with me, I find them, then I go back. So if you're in a boat or on a four-wheeler, I like to zip tie that trap shut or wire it, fold these up, and these will haul pretty good. Like that, you know, just another little trick, because if you just throw that on your wheeler in the boat, it's going to hang on everything in there. I got all mine preset with the safeties on, and I just got it wrapped around my each stand with a, with my, um, with my uh, extension cable on it. Yep. Anything to help you to keep everything straight. I hope that made sense, but anyway. Makes it easier trapping out of a car. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that made sense with hanging out water level. I think you see what I'm talking about.